Hi, I'm Eric Johnson at Vanderbilt's Owen Graduate School of Management, and I'm here today with Cindy Kent. Cindy is the Chief Operating Officer of Everly Health. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Eric. It is wonderful to be back on campus. We're so excited to have you here. And Everly Health is an exciting company. It's a leader in the virtual care space, really focused on healthcare access, particularly around testing. Um, how's virtual care changed over the last two years? Yeah, and uh, the whole foundation and founding of Everly was not only a just about access, but also affordability and transparency and pricing as it relates to diagnostic testing. And so diagnostics is at the heart of everything that we do, even though we have much bro uh, broader services and offerings at this point. But there could not have been anything better for telehealth and virtual care uh, than the last two and a half years. I think that uh, telehealth, as you know, was founded before then and moving along, but it was certainly an accelerant when during the COVID and the pandemic and um, folks were either forced not to get care or to find alternatives to care and telehealth was a solution to that. And so what we found is, you know, there's studies that over 32% of Americans have utilized telehealth and of those, 79% say that it has allowed them to take their health into their own control. And, and um, you know, at the end of the day, being able to be your own advocate and navigate a very com otherwise complex system is critically important. AMA, I think it was 2021, also did a study with physicians and 80% of the physicians that sur were surveyed said that, you know, the telehealth also provided greater access um, to patients to better care than they would have gotten otherwise when you're waiting around for scheduling to take place. And so I think it's here to stay. It's certainly changed for yeah. the better. Um, and even though things are, are largely epidemic now and, and uh, normalizing to a certain degree, it is a good thing that telehealth will stay a sticky part of those changes that have happened in healthcare over the last few years. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I know myself, I'm a, a big advocate and I love the convenience of telehealth, so it couldn't have come fast enough, sure. you know, it's like, especially when you're traveling a lot, it's just great to be able yeah, to Yeah, and concierge and healthcare, I mean, there's all different flavors and types of it. I think that there probably was a little bit of fear mm -hmm. uh, by providers that they're, if they didn't have telehealth services themselves, that they would lose their patients, they wouldn't necessarily come back. And it's proven to be otherwise, that many times it's trying to navigate and understand what's going on. And every single consultation, certainly in our model, that the uh, patients end up going back to their primary care physicians for ongoing care and treatment after the telehealth services if they're offered uh, by someone other than their primary provider. Well, Everly Health has certainly been riding that telehealth wave and growing both organically and through acquisitions. Um, but more recently, of course, now the tech downturns putting pressure on that. How have you been managing the change? Yeah. Um, so 2022 has been a year like no other. I mm. understand, obviously. Mm. Um, I've been at Everly Health about a year and a half and my first foray uh, with an earlier stage company, although it is, um, as you know, a, a fast growing unicorn. And so it's exciting times, um, but it also challenges uh, that have been presented as well that we estimate will go um, at least another year. So we're planning for the long haul in this. But what I would say, it has absolutely been a forcing mechanism to get us uh, really narrowly focused on the critical few priorities and what's gonna bring value to customers and to patients. And so, whereas before in venture capital, before the downturn, it was all about the customer acquisition and long-term value mm -hmm. and the stickiness and repeat buyer performance, and now we're having conversations seemingly pivoted overnight into conversations around path to profitability yeah. and making sure that our gross profit to customer acquisition ratio is attractive one. And so we, like the rest of uh, tech, has had to pivot in really good ways, but I'm excited because we've built in things that we thought were gonna be longer term, um, like uh, not just having our uh, treatment kits, but we've added a test to treat and virtual care model uh, to our business model, creating flywheel between our DTC traditional model as well as our enterprise business 
in a much more accelerated way. And so there have been a number of highlights amidst the lowlights of 2020. A pathway to profitable growth, sustainable growth. That's exactly growth, right. That's kind, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And so um, it's caused us to make some really tough but important decisions on, you know, make, build, or buy, mm -hmm. and what are the things that really drive our value proposition to customers and consumers, and anything that isn't critical, meaning we absolutely have to have quality, high quality and accurate results in our testing. But what aspects of that, for example, do we absolutely have to own to be able to control? And so um, we're looking at that very critically and are shedding things that don't contribute to that. So it, it is an exciting time at Everly for sure. Yeah. So Cindy, you've visited Owen a number of times over the years. And one of the things I've always appreciated is your thoughtfulness, uh, how you think about your career and your life. And you talk a lot about significance and impact. Uh, how are you thinking about those today? Yeah, well, I'm a lot older, 25 years to be exact, since I was uh, a student here at Owen. Um, and so what I would say is the idea of significance and legacy has become even more paramount and important to me. And as I, you know, I have these daily mantras, about five of them. But it's one of the things that I say every single day is one of one of them is to um, radically transform the lives of others through every interaction, regardless of how small that interaction may be. And I take that to heart. And so something as simple of one example, if I'm at a hotel more than three days on a business trip, I love fresh flowers. And right. And the reality is they're not dead by the time I get <laughs> ready to go. And more than simply leave them in the room for housekeeping to take, I go and present them to them. Like, I want you to have this. I'm not able to take them on the plane with me. And these are for you. Something that simple. And how they light up just that you were thoughtful. You didn't necessarily buy the flowers for them, but to give it to them, eyeball to eyeball, human to human, mm -hmm. heart to heart. Um, like, I, I think about that. It is something as profound as, you know, in 2019 of um, naming or, or supporting a endowed scholarship for the Owen School and you know that might be on the extreme but not missing the small opportunities mm -hmm. to make a difference in when you ask somebody how are you or hello good morning how are you and really pausing to listen for the answer those small things truly make a difference and then you know at this point in my career I get probably more calls for opportunities whether it be for board work or or jobs than I would ever be interested in taking but I take those calls so that I can refer others in my network and to be helpful in advancing the careers of friends and or mentees that I might have and so um, there are so many ways to make a difference but being thoughtful and intentional definitely would would mm -hmm. be helpful in that in that journey yeah paying it forward in small always. and big ways always that's yeah. great well and also your career has been from very large med tech companies to now a unicorn startup that's just blowing so and going fun. and all these yeah. kinds of things um, lots of lessons along the way I was wondering if you could share a leadership lesson yeah. uh, from those years well I'm still wed to the one I shared in 2019 of activity without progress is not progress but um, I would also add to that at this point of going slow to go fast and I've learned that and it's manifested in a number of ways one is just the velocity of business, right? This the pace and technology causes us to be even faster. And one of the things that you know I've come to appreciate, I'll give the first example in M&A situations. You acquire a company and one or two things tend to happen. You just rush them in and throw things together and hope that it works out so that you can keep moving forward or you don't have time to ever integrate and you leave it kind of out um, as a cultural outlier. And at some point that integration is gonna happen even beyond the software and the tech and shared systems that way. Um, and it's going to feel worse later than doing it at the beginning uh, because you give it time for the cultural roots to develop that may not be harmonious or um, synchronous with the acquiring company. And so it's really important to do it on the front end. The other just business, I, an operation continuity is literally looking at every single role, every single workflow, how does work get done, how do we want work to get done with this integrated whole, because it's not going to be 
value added to the employees if their work or parts of their work are being done by three other people. That's not very rewarding. The other part is you create all of this friction in the organization um, that you really don't understand why it's taking so long to get things done because you don't do end to end. So I've had to come mm -hmm. in um, you know, a couple of times and, and really relook at work processes. How does work get done? What happens when it leaves your hand and goes over the wall mm -hmm. to somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And I've had employees say, I don't know what happens mm -hmm. next. I don't know what's upstream or downstream of me. And so just working through those um, efficiencies, right, and taking the time to do that well will only help companies and businesses go faster mm -hmm. down the road. And I love how that links to your earlier response, which is, is really about the value of the individual, the impact they're having, the dignity of their work, and oh, yeah. helping them see their part in this big process. So oh, yeah. That's neat. Well, Cindy, thanks so much for spending the day at Vanderbilt. Thank you. It's wonderful to be back. Thanks for having me.